Hello, my name is Moon Cat, and I'm here to show you a brand new Fortress of Empires tool I've been working on. The tool is called Foe Event Builder, and it's a city builder for your event sets. Uh, so, the main thing you can do is build your own event set designs from all the different event sets, and more importantly, immediately get all the feedback you need from what these designs will produce. So that's what the tool can do. Uh, I will go. I thought I would go quickly over all of these options, uh, what each of them do. Uh, but first, I thought I would show you how to import your own city, because I think that's possibly what quite a lot of you want to do: import your own city and then try to improve it. So uh, here, under the load import build uh, section, uh, you can click the how to import, and you will get a quick overview on how to do it. Uh, and I thought I would just quickly show you how that's done. So, in order to do that, you need to go to your city, and you do need to have uh, FOE Helper installed. Um, sadly, there's no other way around that, so if you don't have it installed, I'm afraid this won't work. Uh, but yeah, you can always use it as a standalone without importing your own city. But yeah, let's quickly go over how that's done. So. First thing you need to do is to go into the developer tools of your browser. Uh, on Windows, that's Control shift i Or alternatively, you can go in here, More Tools, Developer Tools. Then you need to go to the console, and then back into Foe Event Builder. So that's a builder. You go here, you find this string, copy that, and simply paste that into the console and hit Enter. So here you'll have Basically, you will have your own city and how it's built and everything. So you copy this, and then you go back here into the builder string, paste that, and then load build. And then this will take some time. And there we go. There we have your own city in the build, in, in the tool. <laughs> and here you can start experimenting. You can move around. Uh, you can delete. You can select multiple and remove move multiple buildings if you want. And yeah, you can do all sorts of experimenting. Um, so, let's quickly go over what all of these options can do. So, to add a building, here you have some options on which set you want to add building from, what, which building in the set, and some settings which age, level, and so on. So you click add, you will get new, and then you can start placing it around. So let's say I want it there. Uh, if I click on it again, you can see all the options, uh, all the stats. So you can see that it currently has, oops, currently has one bonus. Uh, it's connected to one other uh, set building, unique set building. Uh, so it currently only gives these. So that's not good. But if you click on these others, you'll see they have fully are fully connected. So let's remove remove that building. But yeah, more importantly, let's go over the production overview. So here you can see what this design will produce. And you can choose from looking at each individual set or all of them combined. So let's look at my cherry garden set uh, first. So here we have two options, the total or per tile stats. Let's go total first. You can see that uh, they give 20 for price, which is not a lot for the size. But yeah, 250 uh, attack bonus, which is my main goal with this set. Uh, so yeah, there we get a quick overview. But perhaps more importantly, uh, if you close that, you can see at per tile stats. And here you can see that uh, I get very little fortress points, but quite a good attack stats uh, over one attack per tile which is quite good and quite uh, close up there with the best attacking buildings nowadays. Um, so yeah, if you go to the piazza, you can see that it gives more forge points and goods, but not as much attack bonus. And then if you go to the Celtic one, yeah, it's not quite up there. So yeah, this is, uh, this is what what I really missed when I was experimenting with sets before. I used to use an Excel sheet or just simply drawing, and I would uh, be able to create some very interesting designs, but 
I would have to calculate all the sets manually. So that was my goal when creating this tool. So yeah. Um, these sets are calculated using all the in-game rules. So uh, how many unique uh, neighbors of the same set determines how many bonuses it has. So this building will have two unique buildings next to it. And same for this, this will have three. So one, two, three, and so on. Uh, so yeah, that's that's all according to the rules, uh, how it's calculate, calculated in-game. So uh, that's production overview. Uh, when you're done experimenting, you can save your build. And here you have three options to share. You can share a string. And this string can be pasted into here and you can load it that way. Or you can get the full link. This is a link up here. Oh, not, it's not this, this is the one I loaded, but yeah. You get the full link, or you have an automatically shortened bitly link. So yeah, you have three options on how to share. And lastly, down here, you have some options. So you can decide if you want to hide or show the initials. Uh, this is, yeah, up to you. And you can choose if you want to hide the city outline. Uh, it's yeah, quite difficult to see sometimes. Uh, perhaps you could make that thicker. But yeah, and then uh, down below here you have two options that I really, really like. So the first one is show buildings that require roads. So all of these highlighted buildings need roads. Um, so here you can quickly see that these four buildings they will not be able to be connected by roads. If we go back here, these are not connected. But yeah, importantly, they still count as a bonus for the other other buildings. And then, I also have another option to show how many connections a building has. So here you can see that all of the Securis have full connections, all the bonuses. Uh, but that all the other uh, buildings in my uh, Cherry Garden set, uh, all the other buildings are missing connections. So all of the yellow ones are missing one, uh, these are missing two and three and so on. So I find this really helpful when experimenting with different sets to see how, uh, yeah, see how many bonuses each of these sets have. So in the tool, there's a guide, a quick guide, uh, which gives you all the information you need on how to use things. Um, and yeah, I, I'm really surprised by how, in my opinion, how well this turned out. It was just a hobby project I wanted to work on after my term ended. I had quite a lot of free time, so I thought, why not experiment with something that I personally would love to have? Uh, so yeah, I just started experimenting. And in the end, I'm really pleased with the result. Uh, so yeah, here we have some examples, so some quick examples I could show you. Uh, so one example is this uh, Celtic set, uh, perhaps a bit late to show it now, but uh, perhaps this fall uh, it will appear again, so perhaps you will aim for something like this. Here if you go showing you more connections, you can see that all of these uh, have full connections except for these in the middle. And of course, the fairy rings re require a uh, road connection, so that will ob ob obviously not be connected. Um, this is not detected manually by the tool, so you have to set it yourself. So if I set that to connected, it will uh, be calculated in the production overview. So yeah, important to set that on your own. And that way I, I could do that on automatically. Well, I could, but yeah. And yeah. So yeah, that's that's a quick overview of the tool. Um, I'm, I will continue to work on it whenever I have some free time or whenever I want to, really. Uh, as I said, it's just a hobby project for me. It's something I've done on my spare time. I've had quite a lot of free time, so I wanted to spend it on something that I quite enjoy. I really like developing new things and 
which is something that I found very, very fun to work on. Uh, so I do hope you have some uh, fun using it, so that it might prove helpful. And that you might experience, uh, might find some new, new setups that uh, you never thought about before. Uh, I guess I can leave you with one uh, thing that uh, someone someone made. I'm not can't sadly not remember who, but someone made a quite interesting winter village setup, which is something you don't see nowadays, at least in my on my world, which is quite new. Which is quite a cool setup. That's not oh, that's wrong building. Uh, tinker, there we go. There's quite a cool setup, a three by uh, a six by three setup, which gives you, uh, which gives you, I believe, fifteen attack damage. Uh, which is, you know, it's not the best, but it is quite nice. And then two of these. There we go, I think that's it. Yep, as you can see, all the uh, helm box, all the attacking buildings, they are fully connected. And if you go to the production overview, that gives 15 attack damage, <laughs> not a lot, lot more. Uh, and if we look at per tile stats, that's 0.83 attack per tile, which is you know it's not the best, but it's it's good. Uh, and I thought this was a really cool design that someone showed, and I did make some designs myself that's based on this that was even better. So from now on, when I see some uh, some of these in the antique dealer, I will. I'll consider buying it if, if they're not too expensive, which they often aren't. So, yeah, that's about it. Um, if you have any, any questions, I will be answering in the comments. If there's any issues, uh, please contact me on GitHub. Uh, if you have any suggestions, I'm, I would love to hear. Um, and then, as I've said, this is a hobby project that I would love to continue working on if there's anything interesting. Um, I'll have some free time in the future. Uh, so, yeah, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to come with them, and that's about it. Thank you very much for watching, and I do hope you enjoyed the tool, so thank you.